In this video series, we're going to learn how to create an animated visualization of the selection sort algorithm. You may want to watch these videos in the intended order, so check out the description for the link to the playlist. In the last few videos, we learned about selection sort, how it works, how to implement it in C sharp, and how to randomly initialize cubes of varying height. In this video, we're going to learn how to sort these randomly generated cubes according to their height using the selection sort algorithm. Let's continue our project from the last session, which already contains the code for the random cube initialization. We'll open up the script containing this code and then paste in the selection sort function that we wrote in an earlier video. The first thing that we want to do is to remove our call to the now non-existent print array function, as we won't be printing out the contents of an array to the console anymore. Next, we'll change the input parameter to our sorting function from an array of integers to an array of game objects. This is because we want to sort our cube game objects this time and not a random series of numbers. Because we now have an array of game objects, we can't simply compare one object directly to another to see if one is bigger or smaller. So instead, we'll change this comparison in the if statement to use the y value on our game object's local scale. This value can be considered as the height of our cube meaning we're now comparing the height of one cube to another. To swap our game objects within the array, we need a temporary variable just like before. But this time, we need to change its data type from an integer to game object. At this point, we have a function that will reorder an array of cubes in ascending order according to the cube height of each item. However, this doesn't move the cubes around and reorder them visually on screen. To do that, we need to adjust the position of our cubes when we do our swap. For this, we'll also need a temporary variable to store the position of one of our cubes. Then, we'll change the position of our cube at index i to be where the cube at index min was on the x-axis. We'll do this the same the other way around as well. All that's left is to call this function from our start function after the initialize random function, passing our array as the parameter. If we click run, we can see a series of cubes lined up in ascending height order. The sorting happens near enough instantly because we haven't introduced any pausing. That's it for this video on sorting cubes with the selection sort algorithm.